Hi, I'm Tara Hitchcock. You are watching a very special on location edition of Harkins Theaters behind the screens. Believe it or not, we are in London, England, the site of the world premiere of James Cameron's latest film, Avatar The Way of Water. Can you believe it's been 13 years since the director immersed us into the world of Pandora? Well, get ready to spend some time underwater. We had a chance to chat with the cast. Now, have, have we talked before? We have. I familiar, actually yeah. did the first Avatar junket here in London. Okay, so that long. was kind of epic. Well, this was worth the wait. Okay, good. <laughs> this good, is, good. This is incredible. And I'm a diver, so everything... So I mean, you, know, I, you know what we're talking about here, right? I, the wonder. Now, a lot of it is, is written very small. Uh, if you look very closely, you see the amazing things. So we just make them bigger in the movie. So I work with Harkins Theaters also, which is the largest family-owned theater chain in the U.S. We're based mm -hmm. in Arizona, okay, but in four good, states. Good. I'm going to start out with a really basic question, because you're all about the feeling that a moviegoer gets and yes, the experience. exactly. How are you feeling? Oh, I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm over my jet lag. Been here for a couple of days, you know, promoting the film. Yeah. And we're getting good feedback. Um, and, I, and I like it that people are picking up on the things that we're, we were throwing down, you know, about, about the family and the father's son and the, you know, oh. the conflicts and the bonds and all that stuff and not getting too preoccupied with the, with the technology and the animation and all that, all that part of it. This is all about reminding people what that big screen experience can be, right? And, and we set ourselves that challenge. It's really an unparalleled experience that you can't have in the home. It's interesting. It's also an experience that divers or people who don't dive will now get. How did you create a moment that's better than actually what you can experience in real life? I think if you take a camera into our real ocean, you bring it back. So many people have been so excited to do that for so long, from Jacques Cousteau on, that it's now like it's recognizable imagery, and we've all seen it. And sometimes with science fiction and fantasy, you have to step outside and look back at our world kind of in a, in a mirror or through that fantasy lens to really appreciate what we have. So I'm synthesizing together my whole life underwater, 50 years of diving and diving in, in submersibles, going to the deepest places. Some of the best dives are the shallowest dives, as, yep. as you know, right? 15 feet of water with the beautiful sunlight coming down in the coral and the small fish and nudibranchs. So how do you synthesize all that and, and, and bring that sense of wonder to people that aren't divers? Well, you kind of make it all a little bit bigger and you, you create some kind of fantasy movement for the creatures and, and that sort of thing. You know, and you, but we all, I think, subconsciously have this connection to the ocean, even if we're not divers. I don't know if it's like a memory of being in the womb for nine months. I don't know if it's some kind of memory that goes back through, through time, many generations, maybe back to when we all lived in the ocean. Who knows? Yeah. But I feel it. I feel it when I'm underwater. Most divers do. Yeah. You are the king of this stuff, but what was the biggest surprise having done the second one, even though you know this world better than anybody? I think we did surprise ourselves with how well the performances, the subtleties of performance came through and how well, for example, Sigourney mapped her performance mapped to being a 14 year old girl and you don't question it. I don't question it. I, most people haven't. Yeah. And I, I find that, you know, she's really a favorite uh, amongst the characters for a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, and she just, she's just such a luminous character. She's just so beautiful. And so we managed to capture kind of Sigourney's inner flame in a way. Mm -hmm. At the age of 69, when she was doing this work, she's playing a 14-year-old, a 15-year-old. It's pretty amazing. Dad, I know you think I'm crazy. Congratulations on this. Thank Since you. I talked to you last, you each have three kids. Each. Yeah. <laughs> three boys, no yeah. less. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which I would imagine completely influenced um, your thoughts and maybe feelings as you were making this. Oh, I mean, we took so much inspiration of our own lives to, to contribute to, to their story. Jake and, and Nateri almost felt very parallel to, to Sam and I because we were having endless conversations about it. Like how we found ourselves like so deeply in love with our family, like our, our new and growing family respectively. It's just like Jake and Nateri, the thought of any threat yeah. um, coming in. Uh, to take away something that is just bigger than you is just unimaginable. And Jim really challenges them. But but he, he's presenting all these relatable scenarios that either we are seeing that's happening in the world or we have experienced through history. And, um, and he's putting this family 
uh, that sticks together at the center of it all. Um, and I find that that's what's most compelling about this movie. Yeah, three boys, <laughs> it's a war <laughs> going on in my house. Uh, um, a lot. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, any parent's going to tell you an instinct of you know, protection is it just, just pops, just comes yeah. straight away. So in the, in the movie, it's about protecting what you love. Yeah, but it's also about somehow finding the energy and the patience to allow them to figure this out on their own. That's right. Yeah, they're, they're you know they're finding their place in the world. You know, they're, any teenager is still thinks they're an outsider. Yep. Uh, yeah. And so it's it's about yeah allowing parents allowing that to happen, but at the same time being fearful that they might be in danger. Mm-hmm. And so it's that push and pull that we can all relate to, as well as more domestic issues. This is a, you know they're arguing to each other. They're having yep. You know the normal kind of discussions that families have, and you know about dinner and, yeah. and telling each other off, and yeah. you know just pull your head in a bit when we go and visit the neighbour. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's relatable and, and just happens to be in this you know, ultimate beautiful world. Yeah. There are still intimate moments. You have no excuse. You've got yeah. you know you're raising a family, but they find time. They still for... go on date nights. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. how they got the three kids. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so maybe in, maybe in three and four we're getting. A whole other. Oh, 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 <laughs> that timed with the if release the of Avatar. If just too. goes away, it'd be fine. <laughs> Congratulations! I'm a diver myself, and I don't know how he managed to capture stuff that makes my diving experiences almost oh, look lame. So... Compared to <laughs> seriously, can you imagine a theme park underwater? I'm yeah. thinking if anyone can do it, it's him. It's Disney really should so true. true. It's so think? true. I dive. I've never done the free diving thing, and I know you hold the record apparently, and everyone says you beat Tom Cruise's record. I'm curious, have you heard from Tom Cruise yet? No. <laughs> no. He's a competitive guy. When he knows you beat the record, I feel like he'd pick up the phone. I know. That would be good, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, I was blown away when someone told me that I had beaten Tom's record. I wasn't planning on doing that. I just wanted to hold my breath for as long as I could. <laughs> I can't even. Have you been able to incorporate those breathing techniques in your everyday life? I mean, I can't say that I have, although I will tell you that I loved it. And whenever I feel the need to kind of like calm my system down, I do find myself thinking, oh, I just want to go and do a breath hold. I just want to go, and, mm. I just want to just get in the water and do a breath hold. But it's not something you can just go and do. You know, you, you do have to be trained. It's really not something you should try at home. Yep. You cannot do it by yourself because often people surface, take a big breath, and actually that's when they black out and yep. run into trouble. So always have to have someone with you. So in fact, when I learned how to do it, my husband also learned alongside me. He couldn't hold his breath as <laughs> I could, but we had to do that so that if ever I needed to practice, I, I had someone right there. <clears throat> so the whole experience was just amazing. I loved it. Very meditative. I'm not very good at kind of quietening my mind. So I think it was probably quite good for me. You know, it's interesting. I mentioned we talked last on the mountain between us. In this film, not only is she a warrior, She's a pregnant warrior. And Mm. I talked to you last about the other film, of all the things that you did. You mentioned that the older you get, you feel like you're more of a wuss. But after having done that film and then this film, I can't imagine what your kids think watching you do all this. You are a warrior in real life, in my opinion. But they just, that's just me. I mean, my kids are just used to it. You know, this is the kind of thing that, you know, this is the kind of thing we do in life. We're just a pretty robust family. You know, we go and get in freezing cold water. My daughter and I recently in the summer, we went for a walk and it was raining and we were walking by a river and it was just, it was just a very beautiful river. And I was like, come on, get in the river. I was like, get in the river, let's get in the river. Like, I don't want to get in the river, mum, it's freezing, it's raining. I'm like, get in the river. I'm like, get in the river. Well, of course we're getting in the river. She's like, no. I'm like, get in. So, yeah, um, that's just how we are. <laughs> Did anybody happen to see Kate Winslet yelling at her daughter to get in the river while this was well, taking place? It wasn't quite a yell. It was okay. more of a kind of a helpful shove. <laughs> <laughs> Again, inspirational, you lead by example. I try. The humans are returning. Sigourney made a comment that James Cameron is still driven, but the colors are warmer. Is that an accurate statement? That's a really beautiful way of putting it. He's so driven. He's so determined. But I really relate to that. I'm fairly driven and determined. You know, if someone's held their breath for five minutes, I'm going to do it for six. And then when I did do it for six, I was like, well, next time I'm going to do it for seven. And so I did. So, yeah, he's warm, he's really thoughtful, he's really mindful, he cares about the world, he cares about people and animals. I mean, he's, he's a celebrator of actors. Um, 
it was an amazing experience and it's all his creation. I mean, I just don't know how he does it. Every living thing that crawls, flies or squats in the mud wants to kill you and eat your eyes for jujubes. I have to admit, I, I did the first Avatar junket and I remember when I heard they were doing another, I thought, I don't know if it's possible, but it would be so cool if Stephen Lang was back and you're back in a big way. How they were heard you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Jim Cameron heard oh, you. Of course. It's the energy. It's all about the energy that you put out into the universe. You know, in the first one, though, and I remember, and you look fantastic. You were so jacked and so ripped, but you're mm -hmm. playing kind of a different version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Did you think, oh, I can kind of let myself go a little bit. I don't have to be as ripped. <laughs> <laughs> or no 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 it had no, no no I needed to be look I didn't need to be as big yeah that's what it was and I was I'm probably 40 pounds heavier in that than I am now but that was hard to sustain you know mm -hmm. I was I was kind of beyond myself in a way there and I kind of broke down after it just because of the uh, I was trying to stay so big and jacked that was the yeah. that was the uh, brief that I got from Jim I need you big I want you big. Yeah. <laughs> but this time, of course, playing Quaritch the Recombinant uh, and, and a Navi to boot, I know that my whatever I am is going to be shaped and contoured by a team of, you know, artists. Yeah. But I need to, I needed to be in, in really good shape just to do the activities I had to do. And in mm -hmm. fact, I needed to be in better shape than I was in the first one because I'm doing a lot more uh, leaping about, you know, parkour kind of stuff. It's just, it's a different, it's a much more fluid kind of movement that I have as a Navi than I had to have as, as Quaritch. But it was easier in the sense that I didn't have to be bench pressing 230 or 40 pounds, How which I couldn't do anyway. <laughs> <this point. laughs> How rewarding though either way. Is it safe to say he's softer this time around? No. Okay. No, I don't think he's softer. I think he is more... Uh, there's more to him. There's more depth yep. to him. The first, the quartz that we knew from the first one, uh, there were soft sides to quartz. They just were irrelevant to the story that mm -hmm. was being told. You're so good. I mean, you are such a highlight of this film. I, I am fortunate. I've been diving for years, and I love diving. I got certified yeah. probably 20 years ago. Yeah. You can't duplicate what he did here. How much underwater stuff do you actually do in your personal life, if any? And will you take some of the breath work? I, I mean, I feel like just the breath work alone, you could put yourself in a meditative state wherever you are. Ding, bingo, you're, you're so right about that. The, 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 uh, the breath work we do, you do in training, uh, in free dive training, is essentially a savasana, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. It is, it's a meditation. You realize how not relaxed you really are <laughs> right. you know, right. when you start working on this, you know. Yeah. And uh, and 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 I think, as you suggest, you take away from it as well. It stays with you, you know. It's not my native element. Mm. There are places I'd rather be myself, you know. I'd rather be on a horse or uh, on a couch. Okay. <laughs> Okay. At this point, frankly. Let's talk about parents for just a second because, um, again, there's a lot of parenting. There's a lot of ch child rearing here. Best parental advice or just advice in general that you got either from Kate Winslet, Sigourney Weaver, Zoe Saldana. Well, my parenting <laughs> advice comes from Sam Worthington. You can kind of guess the tone in which it's going to come. Um, in other words, he just said, this is all going to be cool. I can, uh, like in terms of like... He didn't talk nothing about to do with the acting oh, phase, but to do with yeah. this world, with press world. It's, yep, it's all good. Like, yeah, everything. But with other words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, man, I feel like they they gave us a lot of acting advice, mm -hmm. and we were able to just learn by watching them too. I think that's kind of the best advice they could is just being themselves, which is pros to the max that are really yeah. masters of what they do, and that enough, I think. I think you learn a lot from people by their actions more than their words. And I think we learned a lot that will stay with us forever from their actions, which were masterful. I think the main thing was um, my, my work ethic. I think my work ethic really evolved on set and they basically like working hard, treating people well. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, you know like the main, the main um, goal, the main yeah. thing. Same. I got so much incredible advice from them mm -hmm. um, on the set, but it was sometimes just the little things like uh, good morning and a hug or like good job or let's take it again or just being on the set with these incredible people. Not only just 
outstanding as they are in the industry, but incredible people as they are, and uh, yeah. We are thrilled for Harkins Theatre's moviegoers to see this, and I don't know if they are ready. Do you think they are ready? Look, I think uh, Harkins Theatre moviegoers are ready for anything, and, yeah. and you know, I think it's so great that uh, you know, it, it's this family-based movie chain that, that is really reaching America, and that's, yeah. that's really important. I know that James has always talked about it's about giving people a feeling when they leave, an experience, versus it's not all about the technology, it's about what they feel. What was the predominant feeling you had after you saw the whole thing in its entirety? Well, I think the first time I really got to see the movie was just recently with the cast in New York, where I got to screen it for Sam, Zoe, Sigourney, and Stephen Lang. Uh, we've been working on it, and I've seen the whole movie completed, but never in 3D, never with the finished mix. And my feeling was that it's a movie that delivers on the promise that we make, mm -hmm. which is that we're going to give you something that you can walk away from the theater with. Not a plot you leave at the theater, but feelings and emotions and, and, and a sense of having been there that you walk away from the theater. And that was the universal feeling with all the cast, and it was just this... To be there with them when they saw it for the first time. I had seen other cuts of it. This was their first time seeing any cut of it. And it was very rewarding. Stop.